Hello, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Firstly, this episode is gonna be on installing the Reflex onto the single turbo car. However, I just wanna say thanks to all the lovely happy birthday messages, the good guesses that everyone did in that last video about how old I actually am. And just so everybody knows, I am 30. So yeah, a lot of you were pretty close. Anyway, the car. Now, I've done some work to it last night. So you will notice we have the Phoenix Racing style Chinese intake manifold. It has got the port injection rail and I have got 750cc Bosch port injectors in that rail. Now there are a few different ways that you can configure this. Uh, basically with the fittings that I had at my disposal, the best way I could do it, I've got the fuel feed coming in the back there. Hopefully the camera is going to pick it up. It is a dash six and it goes into the rail. I would have preferred it to come into the middle of the rail to get a better distribution, but I think we're going to be fine. We're going to be, we're going to have more than enough fuel pressure. Sue, Sue. So the other thing that we've added with this setup, we now have the reflex pressure sensor in there. And I just have a dash six orb fitting to one eighth MPT which I did have to go and pick up from the local parts shop. And that's how we have threaded the reflex sensor into the fuel rail. And I did mention in the other video, but just in case you are wondering, the reflex is gonna use the rail pressure on the port injection rail to basically control the secondary fuel pump and give it a, a more consistent low pressure fuel pressure. Got a lot of acronyms in my brain right now. But what this is basically gonna allow us to do over the old system, well, the system that we had in this car and the system that we have in the Flowmax car and the system that was in O'Reilly, all of those, when you get up on song and the secondary fuel pump kicks in, it's a huge hit of extra fuel pressure. So the DME will see the fuel pressure go from say 60 PSI up to 75, and then that throttles back the primary fuel pump the original one, the one the DME is controlling. And then you end up in this cycle between 60 PSI and on the flow max is really bad. It's between 60 PSI and 100 PSI. And obviously that 40 PSI difference will affect the fuel flow rates through the port injectors. So the idea of the reflex controlling that, we're just gonna get a more consistent fuel flow, which means the DME will be doing less work to equalize the fuel in each bank. It should relate to a cleaner burn. 40 PSI difference between 60 PSI and 100 PSI will affect how much fuel comes out those injectors when they pulse for X amount of time. Something else that I did mention in the last video, which we didn't really talk about much, the reflex outputs a PWM signal to the secondary fuel pump, and we use a solid state relay so that it basically, it's an instantaneous turn on. I think the relay will turn on, this is a huge guess now, I wanna say 100 hertz. So it'll turn on and off whatever that means, a lot, and it will give it a, a very nice PWM signal with a lot of current at the fuel pump. So anyway, more injection manifolds on, that's all I needed to say. Uh, what else did I change? I have now got the braided line coming all the way up to the front of the car. I used to have rubber lines, it was a bit of a hack together system, but it did work. And I have to say, the whole time I was using that port injection rail on the channel, I said I didn't like it, but it was on there for two years and it was faultless. The car was fast. It worked. Let's see if we have the same luck with this system and if it lasts just as long. Uh, but yeah, gotten rid of my rubber lines. We now have a single dash six that breaks off from the flex fuel sensor, which is about half a meter backwards. So that dash six then comes up and you can't really see, but there is a Y piece just down in there. And then we've got a dash six that goes off to the hard line on the high pressure fuel pump. And then the dash six that comes up to here. So it's all, it looks nice now. We've got stainless steel braided lines, AN fittings. Cost a lot of money, but the fuel system at the front I quite like. Uh, I was thinking about going to a return fuel system like what we did in the Flowmax. That thing is it's just so much more fuel than the Flowmax turbos are ever going to need. Well, it was on O really. Like it, it, it is a thousand plus horsepower fuel system. However, Ken said that with the PWM control, we're probably not gonna need it on this car. So we won't need to do a, refu a return fuel system. And when you have accurate PWM control of your fuel pump, you can basically change the duty cycle on the fuel pump to ensure that fuel pressure at the front is correct, regardless of boost. So you can use electronics to compensate for the boost pressure in the manifold. Hope that makes sense. Right, on to installing the reflex. So actually, let's get these. Ignore this corner for now, that's the the solid state relay. But this is basically what you get in the reflex when you order a reflex plus for an N54. Just to explain it all for you, this is the main harness that connects the reflex to the car. When you separate this piece, there's really not a lot of wires that need to be tapped into the car at all. So what we're gonna do today is pretty simple. This harness here is the, oh, not really the main harness, but it's like the central harness. This is the plug that actually plugs into the reflex. 
you can see we have our injector wiring here. Unlike the old school injector wiring, which is here, where everything is just sort of piggybacked, we have got an individual wire that runs all the way back to the reflex. So each injector will have its own pin in the reflex plug. In the reflex plug, in the reflex connector, you guys know what I mean. So these other little pins here, so this is the plug that connects it to this harness, so the main sort of feed into the reflex from the car and then we have auxiliary in and output plugs here now you will see there are a few extra wires the reflex has been designed to be sort of plug and play with certain features for instance flex fuel which we'll get onto that oh no it's fallen off flex fuel we'll get onto that in a moment so that's what these extra plugs are here and there is actually one of these plugs connected to the pressure sensor that I have in the fuel rail that we just showed you before we then have these four wires that come off from the reflex as well my mind has just left the building but basically we have I know these two the gray and the white are auxiliary outputs so we're going to use auxiliary one I'll have to double check what it is you guys might be able to see it on the screen but auxiliary one is going to be our boost control and these are earth switching PWM signals. I hope that makes sense to everyone. If you've got any questions about it, please let me know. Something I do want to say, I've done similar how to wire in N54, N54, JB4 port injection before, and a lot of people have so much confusion. Take your time, learn what every wire is doing, what it's connecting, and what its job really is before you start touching it. Having a good understanding of what you're wiring up will help you so much later on if you have any problems. And wiring things into old cars you always have problems so it's good to understand it take your time anyway aux one and two aux one is going to be boost control aux two is going to be fuel pump control the green wire that is for the flex fuel so the reflex has a they, they sort of market it as a built-in flex fuel module if you have had flex fuel on your m54 before you have to buy a flex fuel analyzer which turns the hertz signal out of the flex sensors into a voltage signal and then spits that voltage signal into the DME. The N54 have always traditionally gotten their flex fuel signal through, I think it's the DTML pin 16, and it's basically just a repurposed sensor. Uh, the MHD have worked out how to modify other tables from that voltage. So pin 16, it's a zero to five volt analog signal that we send in there, and then the DME reads that pin to work out how much ethanol is in the tank. It's pretty simple but a lot of people never really took it that far to understand what was going on. So what we're gonna do now, even though the reflex should potentially be CAN bus compatible, it's not yet, but I'm pretty sure it's coming, uh, and you could potentially do the flex signal over CAN bus, because we don't have the CAN bus features just yet, we have to do it the old fashioned way. So the flex signal is gonna come from the sensor, which is this here, that is gonna be a frequency signal which goes in through this little connector into this three pin connector here, the reflex will see the frequency signal, the hertz signal coming off the flex sensor. It's gonna convert it into a analog voltage signal and output that analog voltage through this green wire. And we're gonna connect that to pin 16 in place of my old analyzer. And it will still have flex fuel without the need for the other stuff. While we're talking about all this other stuff, I just wanna show you what I've actually removed from the DME box. So this car originally had the JB4, the JB4 port injection controller, and we had the fuel lit flex fuel analyzer, which was connected through this up into the DME box. I'm really glad that we're removing these three boxes. One, two, three. Oh, and you also needed the Bluetooth connect kit. So four boxes, and we are replacing them with just one. It's gonna free up a lot of space in the DME box. I like it, and this is cleverer. This is way more cleverer. So, the main thing that we need to get done today is actually get this wired into the car so the car can communicate with the reflex. I wanna get the flex fuel communicating and we also wanna have boost and the fuel pump wired up. So reflex, they very nicely provide little separate bags with T-taps, that's what I'm gonna call them. I think that's what they're called. So these three here are for connecting this harness and what they're gonna be used for are connecting the cam signal, the crank signal, and then the T-map signal. So those three there are used for those three wires there. And I'm gonna flash them up on the screen now, but these are the pinouts and the DME connectors that we're gonna hack into, not hack into, we're gonna tap into in the DME box. Now these two T-taps, for the life of me, all I can assume they are for is for the CAN bus. Even though CAN bus isn't working on the M54s yet, 
we have the T-taps to connect the CAN bus to the CAN bus signal that goes into the DME, but I'm not gonna connect those today. And then this last little one you'll see is actually a wire with a T-tap and a DME pin. So this is what they provide for you to connect to the flex fuel. So that is gonna slot into pin 16 on the connector that I put up on the screen right now. And then we'll use the T-tap, and you'll notice it's a different T-tap to these ones, to connect the gray wire to this green wire here. Right, the only thing I can't remember is what the yellow wire is for, but that's pretty much it. If you don't understand that, ask me questions below. Don't go any further until you understand what every wire is doing and moving, well, whatever it was doing really. Just don't, don't blindly connect electronics. You really wanna understand, especially if you're doing the work yourself. Right, what do we need to talk about? I need to have a look at the instructions and work out where all the wires are. Let's go have a look. All right, so this may get a little disorientating because the Australian vehicles or the right-hand drive cars have the DME box on the left-hand side of the car, which is the opposite to the States. So just so everybody knows what they're looking at, the front of the car is that way, the back of the car is that way. Um, so hopefully you can understand what's going on. But here we have my decluttered JB4 gone DME box. So we have the main MSD, well this car's actually got an MSD81, but whether you're MSD80 or MSD81, they look the same. That's the main module there. And with the help of the instructions from Reflex, they do actually explain, I'll flash it up on the screen, but down in the bottom section here, they tell you where each of the connectors are, what each of the numbers, or what each of the connectors are numbered as, which this matches up with the wiring diagrams from BMW TIS. Well, these are actually from BMW TIS. And you can quickly work out what you want to connect. So what I want to do is just visually work out where every wire is before we start hacking into it. Now, the reason for that, I shouldn't say hacking in, before we start tapping in, the reason for that is I want to make sure that we can run all the wiring harness for the reflex neatly. Something I hated about all the modules from the JB4 was how jam-packed everything was inside this DME box. So the first thing that we're going to connect is the main switched 12-volt power wire. Now, I know which one it is because I've already had the JB4 in here, but as you can see on the reflex instructions, it's pin two on the, let me get it right, X60053 connector. No, I got it wrong, X6053 connector, which is this connector here, and it's pin two, it's numbered. The JB4 actually had a patch in pin, uh, but what I'm gonna do is gonna connect into this wire here. That will tuck straight down the bottom of the DME box and it will be nice and out of the way. My plan is to have the reflex sitting in this little channel here. Hope you can see that, mind you, something else. And then we'll have all the wiring harness for the reflex tucked in here uh, and looped through under the bottom. So it should be, should be nice and clean and not, not too jam packed. Anyway, so the first wire on the reflex instructions is the main switch power wire, which is gonna be pinned to on this connector. The second wire they actually list is the main five positive, five volt positive. You don't actually need to use that for this setup. Um, I imagine they need to use it when there's a shared power source, but we don't need to use it, so that's fine. The second wire is the black earth. Now they actually provide a, uh, what do you call it? Not a spade terminal, a hoop terminal. So that's gonna actually loop straight out of the DME box. Now I know a lot of guys will actually go down that way into the engine bay and then down to the earth point just there. I'm gonna tuck it onto the earth point just here. So, which is where I had the port injection powered in before. Okay, so that's the earth wire sorted. I know where that's gonna go. Thirdly, sorry, fourthly is the CAN bus high and low. So something you can have a look at while you're here and get ready for it when the time comes. All of these twisted pairs they are different buses that this, this car runs on. These have K-CAN and PT-CAN, and it may also have a few other CAN buses, but we'll be tapping into one of those twisted pairs later on, not so that we need to worry about at the moment. For this install, the last three wires that we need to worry about are the CAM sensor, crank sensor, and the map sensor. So what do we got? First one is intake CAM. It is pin 11 on the X6007 connector. And we can see that that connector is, ooh, which one is it? It is this one here. And you can see that because it matches up with the short section on the MSD80. So it's this one here and it's pin number 11. And when you have a close look at these connectors, if you're not blind, they do have numbers on them somewhere. Sorry about the rain noise, by the way. Okay, there we go. So we have pin one and pin 13, 
Oh, I can't believe how blind I'm going. And we've got pin 14 and then pin 26. So it's 1 to 13 and then 14 to 26. We want pin 11, which will be on this side. So pin 13, pin 12, pin 11. So it's that yellow wire right there. So we can make a note of that, a visual note. We will tap into it shortly. Now the reason I want to make, I wanted to make sure that we have good access to it for the T-tap so that when it's clipped back into the DME, the wire can come down and it's not going to get in the way of everything. So that one's not going to be a problem. I don't need to do any rearranging. I don't need to de-pin it and move it around. We're not going to have any issues with clearance. The next one is pin 29 on the X6005 connector. So the 0005 is this big black one and it is pin number 29. Let's get the looks out. Uh, much easier to read this one. Pin 23, pin 44. So to find pin 29, we just work our way down. This is going to get tedious for some people, but 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So it's that first yellow wire there. And not great access to it, but that one there. Yeah, we can make that work. We can make that work with a T-tap, that's no problem. And I should just clarify, that is for the crank signal sensor. Sorry, crank sensor signal. And the last one is the map sensor, which is pin 10 in this connector. Da, 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 which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All yellow. So that yellow wire there. Okay. So I know which ones I've got to connect into. I'm going to switch to time lapse. I'm also going to double check all this just without the camera rolling because you don't want to mess it up. And I'm going to get the main harness connected. Hopefully you can hear me all right with the rain. I do apologize. But this is the harness that we're going to wire in. Now you could potentially shorten this if you'd like to. I, the, other than keeping everything tidy, I don't think there's a big need to. But what I will do to undo, what I am going to undo is the main earth wire. So that's that wire there. I'm just going to take it out of the um, zip ties. And that's so that we can run it from the DME box down to this earth point right here. Uh, but depending on left-hand drive or right-hand drive, you might not need to do that. That's just what I'm going to do on this one. That is the hook or hoop that I'm going to use to crimp onto the end of that. Maybe put a little bit of heat shrink just so it looks tidy. And then we've got to crimp on this terminal here onto the positive, which will go in there. And then we have that crimp terminal, which is going to go onto pin 2 here to get the power to it. So I'll just do that little bit of prep, and then we'll talk about how these T-taps work. Okay, so I have the hook terminal or hoop loop terminal uh, crimped onto the earth wire and I've just heat shrunk it just to make it a little bit nicer. Definitely probably not needed. And I have the bullet terminal crimped onto the main power wire. So in case you haven't seen these before, these are, I can't even remember what they used to call them. We used to call them like scotch blocks back in the day. And the idea is it will crimp onto a wire, hopefully you can see in there, and then pierce through the coating on the wire and then touch with the copper core inside and then you close it up clamp the wire in and then that will basically go in there and give it power now it's very hard to film that so i'm going to do that off camera but that is going to go onto the pin 2 of the green connector and the orange wire for the main power source these t-taps super rare in australia but i think they're pretty common in the states they have i'll try and show you they have a pin on this end so you put the dme wire basically in that little gap there it goes through and then you screw it down and then the pin which is in here pinches through the wire and gets it continuity and then on the other side you do need to trim some of the insulation off but basically you poke it through the copper goes all around there and then you tighten it down and it holds that end of the wire in place so i think for ease of work i'm going to put the t-taps on the dme side first and then we'll basically push those in and connect it that way. I am going to just use the wire strippers to trim the wire down a little bit while we're here. The other thing you may notice, I have removed the orange wire. So this is the five volt in for the reflex. 
I don't think I'm ever going to use it on this car. I mean, I could probably trim down the, the wiring harness a fair lot, fair bit, but I've also just put some heat shrink on the end just so it can't short on anything. Not that there should be anything for it to short on in the DME box. Um, but yeah, it was just to remove a wire that doesn't need to be in there. Why the hell not? All right, let me do that. I just thought I'd actually film in normal time, tapping into the T-Map with one of these T-Taps. So we push DME wire through the grey piece and then you just screw the red bit in. Apparently, that's all you need to do. You don't want to go too tight, you just want to make sure that it is clamped in there. Then you take the other end out, and T-map is this one. Push that one through. T-map wire literally just gets poked in the hole. Then you screw it up, apparently. And that's an actual really solid connection. So that's that one done. I'm going to do the other cam and the crank signal, which are on this connector, but I'm going to do that on time lapse. Hey, this is one of the fun things about recording and focusing on what you're saying to the camera, not what you're doing. The first one I connected, I connected the wrong wire. So it should have been cam signal to the X6 00007 connector, this white connector. So we'll just change that over. No biggie, no biggie. So the cam and crank are now connected, and the last one is the T map. I'm going to switch back to time lapse just so I tell you all I made a mistake. Don't film. Okay, so you might have caught on the time lapse, but I have fed in from the engine bay the uh, fuel rail, port injection fuel rail pressure sensor signal wire, the flex sensor signal wire, and I've basically tried to loop it down and then it comes up and it connects through this little section here. And the plan is we'll be able to tuck it all down and it'll all just be out the way. Now, before I, fl before I flex, before I connect the flex, uh, I thought I'd better talk about boost control. So with this car, I have the Mac valve connected to the Bank One original wastegate line. I hope that makes sense. So what I've found from new TIS on this X6007 or 00007 connector, pin number seven is bank one wastegate duty cycle or bank one wastegate actuator valve. So that is that wire there. All I'm gonna do, I don't know why, I could just cut it and properly crimp it, but I've got one of these little cheap computer wires. They actually, with a little pin, they go perfectly and quite tightly into the DME connector. I'm gonna, heat shrink those together, and then I will connect that wire to aux one output of the reflex, and that's gonna be the boost control. Aux two, which is the gray wire, that's gonna to connect to this wire here, which is the fuel pump feed wire, or the secondary fuel pump trigger wire. And I can't remember what, ah, oh, light green <laughs> is the flex. So I will connect the light green wire into pin 16, on this harness, which is the DTML input, and that'll be the flex. So I'll do all that now.
And that is everything. Oh, try and get the light in the right spot. That is everything put back in the box. The, re the, re the reflex is gonna sit just there. And yeah, we've just got to seal the lid back down. The earth for the main power for the relax or the ground for the relax just comes down and goes there. And we've just got to get these wires tucked under and hopefully they'll all seal nicely under the lid. And it still looks like an absolute mess. I was really hoping to make that the DME box look nice, but no, it's still messy. Anyway, that is how you wire in a reflex. So since the last time the camera was on, I have wired in the solid state relay. Now these things, first time I played with one and they do wire in very differently. That relay that you can see there, in fact, I've got a little clip that I'll overlay. That relay was the relay I was using to power my original secondary fuel pump off the JB4. And sorry about the hat, it's been raining and I'm sweating. So that normal relay is now the switched power source for the solid state relay. I'll flash up the Haltech. Now it's been a long one when the GoPro goes flat. I'll flash up the Haltech wiring, which is what I use to wire in that relay. And it is the same one that Haltech sells just without the Haltech sticker. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any questions about wiring your reflex, let me know. As I said at the very start of this video, take your time and try and understand what the reflex is doing, why it needs these signals and it'll all just make a lot more sense in your mind as to why you're connecting them. And if you do have issues down the track, it will help you diagnose them. Now, once you've got it wired in, before you power it up, and I should have mentioned the negative terminal is off the battery at the moment. Before you power it up, you do need to make sure that the Reflex has the correct firmware on for your application and the map to suit what you need it to do. It is a microcontroller. It, it's easy to damage. So don't power it up until you know it's got the right software, firmware, and everything on it like that which is what I'm gonna organize through Ken at Wedge Tuning, cause man, I need to get his map. I need to get this thing dialed in. Hopefully we'll be driving it next week. All right, I'll keep you updated with the process and we'll catch you on the next one.